What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the different environment settings contained inside of InScape and how we can use that to affect our exterior lighting and our exterior scenes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so what I wanted to talk about in this video in particular is the atmosphere settings contained in your InScape settings. And so you can find those by going to the InScape toolbar and clicking on the button for settings. That's going to give you a number of different options options for adjusting the way this looks. Everything from adjusting outlines and adding those to your renderings, all the way through your atmosphere, which includes things like uh, your background and all of that different stuff. In today's video in particular, I want to focus on the atmosphere and the background. So because I've gotten a lot of questions about how do I get the background to add and lots of things like that. So before we get started, this video is a 3D warehouse model. I've used it before. It's the uh, the Mason Contemporane by SZ Kristoff. It's a great example example of both indoor and outdoor detail um, inside a rendering um, or inside InScape. And so I have replaced some of the trees. You can see I've replaced the trees with some InScape proxies in order to uh, in order to create some more realistic um, foliage and that kind of thing. But um, in this case, what I want to talk about specifically is I want to go into the Atmosphere tab and I want to look at a few different things. And so the first thing I want to notice is there's a couple checkboxes right here. I want to get back to those in a second, but those are going to be important. The white background is going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to add a white background. Um, the Load Skybox from File, that's going to let you load a custom HDR image. Um, so you can see how I can add add that in the background as well. We can talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Um, for right now, what I want to show you is I want to show you the, probably the easiest way to add a background inside of InScape. And so the way that that's going to work is I'm going to drop my camera down in here a little bit um, because a lot of the time you kind of want to try to hide the horizon with your model whenever possible. But the first thing to know is the easiest way to add a background inside of InScape is to click this little drop down and select one of these presets. And so these presets are HDR files that have already been included with InScape as a part of your mo or as a part of your library so you can select these all whenever you install InScape so you can see how you can rotate these you can control the rotation by clicking and dragging the slider so this HDR image can sit in your background kind of like this and there's several different options so there's the construction site which I don't really use very much um, it does have some kind of good city stuff in the background uh, I will note if you do want to do that you probably need to position your camera in a way that it kind of hides some of this foreground stuff but you can bring in a construction site you can bring in a town in the background so the town has a bunch of different uh, high rises and other things like that. You can see how you can control the orientation there with the slider in order to kind of get the view that you're looking for. And uh, there's a couple others as well. There's uh, an urban background as well as some white cubes and some white ground. So if you're not looking to be too realistic on this, you're just looking for something to go in the background, you can select that as well. And so those are the presets that you can bring in. So a lot of the time when I do a video, I use the town or the urban just because it's really easy to drop in there. However, some of the questions I've been getting is how do you add a more realistic background in here? And really there's two different ways you can do that. So the first is you can load your own HDR image. So in this case, um, if you check the box for load skybox from file, and then you click the little folder button, you can actually go find an HDR file that you've downloaded, and you can load that file in. And you can load in a JPEG file, or you can load in um, an HDR file. So and depending on the size of that file, this may take a little while to load. You can see how this one in particular, I think, is an HDR file that I downloaded from polygon.com. Um, but you can get these from pretty much anywhere, from like HDR Haven or anything like that. You can see how I can control the same thing, though. I can adjust the rotation of this HDR file however I want. And one thing to note about this is the other thing about these is these also contain lighting information. So you can see how as I rotate that, that's actually affecting my lighting 
inside of my model. And so one thing to note about this is when you have an HDR file in here like this, you'll notice I can't change the time of day like I could before because the lighting is actually being overridden by the lighting data inside this HDR file. Um, so when you have an HDR enabled, you can't use the time of day function inside of Inkscape, but you're getting more realistic lighting out of that HDR file. So again, notice you can rotate that and that's going to affect your lighting. The other thing you can do with this is there's a checkbox in here for use the brightest point as the sun direction. That just kind of lets you set where the sun's coming from. But you can also check this box for normalized brightness in order to adjust the brightness of this file. Because sometimes you bring HDR images in and for whatever reason they just kind of... Uh, they just kind of look washed out. They don't look very good. You can adjust that using this slider. And so the other thing you could do if you didn't want to do this is you could also set up your lighting um, without actually showing that image. And uh, you could actually export this with a render element. So basically this would um, export this with uh, like a colored mask in the background where you can see the background and then you can replace that with an image file inside of Photoshop. If you guys are really interested in that, I can make a video about that a little bit later. But um, that's how you can kind of adjust your background and change your backgrounds and your sky boxes and things like that. You can also, if you want, you can check the button for white background. Like if you just don't feel like dealing with a background or having that in there, you can check or uncheck that box. And so that's kind of your background settings. But then down below, there's also settings where you can adjust things like fog and other things like that as well. So you can see how as I drag this slider across, I can actually adjust the amount of fog in here. So I can kind of, uh, I can kind of make this look a little bit foggier in the background as well. You can see how the light is getting, um, th there's a little bit of light light refracting off of the fog in here, giving you a fog effect inside your model. And so with something like that, you could also adjust your cloud density. So you can see how with these settings down below, I can adjust the cloud density in order to add clouds and adjust the clouds inside of my model. So all of these sliders allow you to adjust different things. And what I really like about this is how adjustable all of this is. So if I look up in the sky, for example, you can completely adjust the different kinds of clouds that are contained in here so you can adjust your variety you can adjust your density um, you can adjust the number of contrails that are in here it's really really adjustable and it's really easy and that's what I really like about Enscape is just how quickly you can make these different adjustments and how easily those will uh, you can use those to affect the way that your um, your rendering looks so you can use the latitude and the longitude to affect the location of those clouds. So if you want to like move them around, you can do that with the sliders. Then you can also adjust the brightness of the sun. So you can see how as I click and drag this to the left and to the right, you can adjust how bright the sun is. So it's going to affect how strong your shadows are and uh, just the way that this whole thing is going to look. And then you can also adjust that same thing if you have like a nighttime scene. So if I drag my, if I hold shift and drag my right mouse button all the way to the right, you can see how I can create a nighttime scene. And there's nothing in here right now, but if I click and drag this stars and moon, what that's going to do is that's going to add lighting from the stars and the moon in the background. So you can see how as I look up, you can see those different things in here. And when I click and drag this to the right, you're going to get more or less brightness coming from the sky and the moon. And then you can also adjust the size of the moon orb. So you can see how as I click and drag this, the size of the moon adjusts based on this setting. So you can generate different nighttime scenes. You could add lights in here and kind of tie them together with that. My favorite thing about this is just how easy it is to make different adjustments and to uh, really kind of customize your image to the view that you're looking for. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is there something you'd like me to cover more in depth? Did you find this helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.